Hey everyone, Yan Zhao here. My mother-in-law is in town, which really made me think it's time to check out Descent into Advernus, possibly the best D&D campaign ever from Wizards of the Coast. The full name of the book is Baldur's Gate, Descent into Avernus. This wonderful masterpiece starts off with your characters in Baldur's Gate. There's a nearby city called Elturiel, which is known for piety and whatnot that has been dragged into hell. This is an excellent adventure because it offers a lot of choice in play style. Your characters can be good, your characters can be evil. Do they want to do the minimum that they can do to get out of this predicament? Or do they want to save everyone possible? The choice is yours. There's a lot of replayability, a lot of ins and outs, and a lot of depth to it. So let's give it a quick look. Like I mentioned, you start off in Baldur's Gate. Now, Baldur's Gate is currently being run by the Flaming Fist. If you've played um, in Cholt, in Tomb of Annihilation, then you will be familiar with the Flaming Fist. They are a quote unquote good sort of self-righteous band run by a bunch of paladins. They kind of suck. In this adventure, their leader was off in another city, El Turiel, uh, which is the city that has fallen. And he is sucked down into hell when the city sucked down. There, to give some backstory, there was an angel, Zeriel. Zeriel decided not cool to have demons fighting each other. She thought she would go into hell and just kill them all right there. So she gathers an army, goes down, gets her hand chopped off, loses her sword, and eventually becomes corrupted and therefore evil, but she's still trying to take over hell, uh, which is Avernus. So there were uh, ruling members of the city, El Turiel, that made a deal with her that allowed her to suck the city down into hell. It's currently held there by eight chains over the river Styx, and it's slowly going to descend in there. And when it does, that's it. Everybody's dead. There's also a planetar, which is kind of an angel -y type thing that was in a sphere over the city that protected it for a long time. But the sphere went dark and nobody knows exactly what happened to it. So your adventures start off in Baldur's Gate. You are trying to help the Flaming Fist contain these refugees coming from El Turiel. In this part, we find out that there are forces in Baldur's Gate that also want to allow it to be sucked into hell. And so the first part is to find them, root them out, and you get a shield that has a demon in it. Now, I particularly like these kind of magic items. They're very special one-off. They're not just like a shield plus one. Uh, they have fantastical abilities, but also you get to have a demon that kind of sort of wants to help you. This demon wants to go back to hell because it thinks it can get out of the shield where it's been imprisoned. So from there, the characters, they essentially have to figure out a way to get into hell. And once they're there, they end up in El Turiel and they have to fight their way out to the main I guess you say ground of hell, Avernus. Now, if you're into demonology, if you like these kind of areas where everyone is looking to get ahead of everybody else and you can bargain with demons and all sorts of gross things, this is for sure for you. In this third chapter, where you're wandering around Avernus, you go to a lot of different areas and you meet a lot of different demons, many of which have medieval connections. You see a lot from Dante's Inferno and from other traditions. 
you can make deals with them, you can go to different areas of hell, it's not all the same deserty lake type stuff. There's a freezing section. Different demons will make different bargains with you, make deals with different factions. Sometimes they'll help you against others. Sometimes they'll give you clues to where the sword of Zariel is, which is sort of your main goal down here that you're looking for in order to free the city of El Turiel. And this is also the area where you'll first encounter the Wandering Emporium. Now the Wandering Emporium is an area that's sort of like Pleasure Island from Pinocchio. All the delights you want, anything naughty. This is the only place in hell where eating and drinking food tastes delicious. And all it will cost you is a soul coin. A soul coin is literally a coin with some being's soul stuck in it. You could be good and you could free the soul from the coin, which allows it to go to wherever it should be for its eternal rest. Or you can buy food or perhaps hookers, whatever you're into and whatever your DM will allow. Anytime your characters need a respite, they can go here. You may also meet Archon. Yes, Joe Magnola's character uh, that we saw in the final couple episodes of Critical Role Season 1, where he stole Vecna's hand from the unsuspecting Vox Machina. He makes an appearance as sort of the champion of Tiamat. You may be able to even get Tiamat to help you in your goals. Zariel has made a lot of enemies. You can have people who will fight against her, or you could actually join her or enable her army by helping them, or you can actually try to save her, save her soul and get her back into the good graces or back into angel status, whatever you want to call it. So after you go into these locations, you'll finally figure out where the Sword of Zeriel is. You go into the Citadel, hopefully fighting your way through and claiming it, and then you're on to escape from Avernus. And in this end, there's variable endings depending on how you want to do it. You could try to save Zeriel. You could free the planetar that is trapped above El Turiel. Or you could just try to sever the chains in GTFO. And it's possible you screw it up and you just find somebody who has plane shift and get the heck out of there. Let the whole city die. It's really up to you. Most of this adventure is great. There aren't a whole lot of magic items. There are some. Uh, there are a whole heck of a lot of demons. So even if you're not particularly interested in running this, you have a homebrew, but you want more devils, arch devils, demons, whatnot, this would be a great resource for you to have. One of the lamer things is something Wizard's really been hyping up and that's the Infernal War Machines. I can't think of a time when anyone has said to me, you know what, Yan Zhao? I would play D&D, &D, except there's no tanks. Now, how many times have people in your party said, man, I really wish we could build a tank and be serious about it? Uh, it never really happens. I'm not quite sure why they decided to add it to this campaign, but Okay, so now there's motorized vehicles in a medieval world. Sorry, Wizards of the Coast, but it just doesn't really match. But anyways, there are these vehicles that run on, of course, souls. The souls of the, of the damned. You will need thousands of soul coins to get one, or maybe you could steal one. And I guess, you know, you could use the stats for another campaign or something, but... Um, I don't know. I like steampunk things, but in this case, it just doesn't work. It's just trying too hard to be cool. You don't need to try, D&D. Wizards, people who are cool will be acknowledged as cool because they're cool. People who try to be cool, that's not cool. So to make a long story short, I highly recommend this one. I think this is perhaps the greatest prepackaged D&D adventure that there is. 
It's got a lot of great themes. Unless you don't like devil, evilly stuff, then maybe this one's not for you. Great themes, great locations, great characters. Um, it's got a ton of maps in here that you could just steal for your own homebrew. It really has a lot to do with lore. There's almost nothing to like about this. I can even see this taking over classics such as Ravenloft or Tomb of Annihilation. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Tell me, what do you think? Do you like Descent into Advernus? Do you think it's too much? What about those Infernal War Machines? Good? No good? I'll see you next time.